Now, based on this, when it comes to the net cross-section area, I see here that section one controls because section one is gonna be five, five, two, section two is gonna be six, 10. It is true that this gross section area is gonna be smaller and you have only one bolt. But if you like to subtract two bolts, the change, the addition in the area here is a lot compared to the deduction that you're doing here to this, right? To this two holes. This why, when you look at this cross section area, it's gonna be even greater than the gross section area that you started with. This gave you the gross section area for the vertical section. But once you put it on an angle, like on a sloping distance like this, this delta A is gonna be a lot. Look what happened again to the end. At the end, you start with gross section area of 5, 8, 7 vertically, but when you have this slope and subtract two holes, it's still at 6, 1. So this DA or delta A is a lot compared to the two holes. This one, when it comes to analysis, now I have two cross-section areas that I'm gonna be working with. One of them is gonna be for the yielding limited state. Just take the 587. The other one is gonna be for the rupture limited state. I'm gonna be using here 552. I don't really need to use this. So at the end, I'm gonna have your two equations. One is gonna uh, be- Professor? Uh, for example, if, if, if is it in the test or some, for something or homework, do I really have to do uh, like uh, section two, even though it it look pretty, yeah, it look uh, obvious for me, it's bigger than one. So okay. do I really need to how do, do you, that calculation? How did how did you confirm that it is greater? How do you know that? Because you have just like, I, analysis. because we run the analysis. But if I enlarge the whole size here, if I give another problem, and I put the whole size here to be two inches, you wouldn't say that. Because the cut mm -hmm. is gonna be a lot. This cut here, mm -hmm. what happened, it's gonna be paid on seven eighths of an inch. But if you increase the cut, if you make this large enough, you may end up with a smaller section than five, five, two. Okay, I see. So it's a matter of a cut, yes. like, it's, it's not given. You need to try both of these two sections. And also in this case, I give you the vertical distance six inches, horizontal distance gave me six inches. So the sloping line here distance was six square root of two. Now the question is, what happened if I made the horizontal distance like only two or three inches? So this L, the length, the sloping length, it's not gonna be square root of two times six. It's gonna be much smaller. And this would have been controlling your analysis. So I wouldn't rush and say, well, this is gonna be controlling and this is not, no. It just happened here in this analysis based on these numbers. Thank you, Professor. No problem. Now let's go back here to the X bar and the U factor and this kind of things. Um, now, let me take you back here. If you cut the section here and you have the plate, and you look here at the distance from the CG of the plate to the CG of the channel. This distance is gonna be very small. Look at this. You can run the analysis if you have half inch plate. This is gonna be the amount of eccentricity that you have in there. And then you subtract the web thickness. And then also you subtract one half of the plate. And the reason because I put the plate in front of the channel. So the plate is gonna be in this side. Look at this section here, look at the picture. You see this dash line? It means that the plate is given in front of the channel. The plate is given in this side, right? On the right side, it's not given in that side. This is the reason that X bar is gonna be very small. And the U factor, this for the amount of eccentricity, is gonna be also small. This is why the U factor is gonna be equals to 1.0. So there is no real reduction because of the eccentricity. A effective here is gonna be the same as the net 552. Now we run the two equations. One of them for the yielding, again, is gonna be based on a fee factor of 0.9, yield strength of 36, cross section area, and you have your 190 kips. The other one is gonna be for the rupture. Same equation that we are repeating. Fee factor of 0.75, ultimate 58, 552 is gonna be the effective, and with that you have 240 kips. Now this section here is gonna be failing in yielding before rupture. This is why this value here is gonna be controlling your design. 
the strength of this connection here or uh, of this channel only is going to be equal to 190.2 kilos. Uh, do you guys want me to repeat any section? Any of that? I can go back to the first example or second or third. You guys, you decide. If you have any questions, let me know. So how did we get the X bar? Can you please repeat? Okay. Let me show you this. Look at these numbers and try to stay here with me. Um, this distance here, All right, this distance here is going to be the distance from the left face of the channel to the CG of it, to the centroid of the section, which means from here to here, to somewhere here, okay? So let me do this for quick. Give me a sec. I think it's given in a textbook. Yeah. I mean, no. It's not the only question he has. He is asking where this is coming from, the entire thing, where this equation come from, what happened? Why are we doing it this way? So what I'm trying to say here, this distance here is going to be in the section properties in the steel manual. And as you said, yes, it's going to be in the steel book. And this is actually going to be the distance from the lift face all the way to here, right, to the CG. Now the plate is going to be in this side. Tension force first is going to be in the plate you'd like to transfer it to the channel. Where in the channel? To the centroid of the channel. So let me do this for quick. Just wanna be sure that we're on the same page. So bear with me, please. Now you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. So the plate, we're gonna place the plate right here. I mean, you put it, the plate is gonna be like this. The CG is going to be, let's say, about here. I'm just exaggerating here. I'm pushing it away so that I'm going to be able to draw it. This distance from here to here is how much? Let's say about 0.6 inches, right? It says 0 0.606. inches. This distance here, 379 with thickness. And right to the center of the plate is how much? It says here, this is going to be quarter of an inch. So the distance from here, which means the center of the channel, to the center of the plate, this distance is equal to what? It's going to be 0.606 you subtract because 606 is going to be all the way to the back. You subtract the width thickness, 0.379. What else you subtract? You subtract one half of the plate thickness, 0.25. Are we good? I guess I should be able now to switch to the previous. Thank you, Professor. All right. Thank you. So I'm going to put the screen here. We'll go back here.
So say is 0.606, subtracting the width thickness, subtracting one half of the feet thickness. This is why it comes to be almost equals to one, because when you look at the previous picture here, what happened? We put the plate in the same side. If you remember, we put it in the same side as we have put, look at this. The plate is giving the same side as the CG of the channel. But if I put it on the other side, the X distance is gonna be larger and the U factor is gonna be smaller. This makes sense to you guys. Um, sir, what was 0.606? 606, this 606 is the location of the CG measured from the left side of the channel and this is taken from the steel book. Okay. All right. All right, with that, we're done with the tension. Um, so if the plate was uh, attached to the other side of the channel, then we would uh, take half of the thickness of the uh, web and half of thickness of plate, right? Yes. All right, let's look here at the homework. Following truss is made out of square steel tubes, HSS. I'm taking this connection from here. This give me the section, right? I have three members that I need to design. And you need to expect that all of them is gonna be in tension because this section is still about tension, right? Tension design of members. You have F1, F2, and F3. So first you need to solve and find out F1 and F2 and F3. You need to solve this truss. Shouldn't take long time from you if you are good with truss analysis. And remember that this angle here is gonna be 45 degrees. How would I know this? Because the height is gonna be two and a half feet. It says here four distances times five feet. So from here to here is five, five, five and five. So from here to here is gonna be two and a half. So horizontal distance from here to there, this distance gonna be two and a half, two and a half. Height is gonna be two and a half, therefore this gonna be at angle one to one. It's gonna be 45 degrees. It's gonna be number one. Number two. I'd like to design the three members, but I'd like to have only one design. Remember this, it's gonna be one design. I'm not looking for three different sides. Because look at this, I have a gusset plate here on each side. So if you have a gusset plate, one plate at each side, you want this width, which means perpendicular here to the screen to be the same. And it's gonna be square. What does it mean by square HSS? It means either four by four, five by five, six by six, three by three HSS. And the thickness, as it says here, should not exceed 3 sixteenths of an inch. So don't do four by four by quarter of an inch. I don't want this. I want it to be either four by four by 3 sixteenths, or five by five by 3 sixteenths, or six by six by three, or even 10 by 10 by 3 sixteenths. This gave you the numbers again. Now, this load that you're looking here at, this is ultimate already. This is factored. So when you do your analysis, there is no load factors because it's already multiplied by the factor, if this makes sense to you guys. So please don't add load factors. Load factors are already in there. Make sense or no? We're good about this? Yes. Okay. All right, so this load factor is gonna be factored. Now I need to look for a section is gonna be working. Also, I have this one hole in the member, which means once you do here the gross section area, you look it up in the table, and then after that you subtract how many hole sections or holes? I'm gonna say one. no, two, because two. you're gonna have one here in this plate and one is gonna be the other side. So when you look at this section here, you're gonna see an HSS, and then it's gonna be sandwiched between two plates. And then you have one through both. So you're gonna be cutting twice through this. What a, one, one of the holes is gonna be at this side and the other is gonna be in the other side from the other location, right? So you subtract two holes. We're good? Yes. Okay, if you have any question about this homework, you better ask now because over the weekend, don't leave it as a weekend. Over the weekend, 
you're going to be busy doing other stuff. I'm also going to be busy and you're going to have a question for me. So if you have any questions, feel free for tomorrow during the office hour. If you'd like to come by, at least by that time, you'd have thought about it and then you ask me any questions. We're good. Should I move forward to Flexion members or not yet? Sir, can you please explain the assignment once again? Explain the assignment. All right. Item number one. You're going to be solving here the trust and find out F1 and F2 and F3. Any questions on this from anyone? No. All right. You're good. You can solve this. Now, design of these members. How many members should I design? Four or three? The picture here shows four, but here it says three. Which one should I design? Well, it's going to be one, two, and three. All right. I want the same design, which means once I'm done with the analysis of this trust members, give me the larger of the three. I'm going to take the largest force and just design for it because I'm saying here, I'd like to see one design. It's going to be just one design. So after you solve this, force members, right? The force in this members, just pick the largest force and say, now this is going to be my ultimate force. We're good at this point? Yes. Yes. Do next. If I were you, I'd do quick spreadsheet. A spreadsheet is going to help you out to try different sections, different HSS. So you can try, for example, four by four by three sixteen. Is it okay to do by quarter of an inch? See, no. Because it says here, the thickness should not exceed 3 sixteenths of an inch. So don't try quarter of an inch, don't try 3 of an inch, half inch. No, I don't want that. So to help you out a little bit, here's a hint. You start with 4 by 4 by 3 sixteenths. If it doesn't work, try 5 by 5, 3 sixteenths. Doesn't work, try six by six, three sixteen. Someone's gonna say, I did my numbers here. Four by four is working five, five by five is working, six by six is working. Which one should I pick? Gonna say the smallest of all of them. Because I'm sure also if you put 10 by 10, it's gonna work fine. But if four by four is working and 10 by 10 is working, of course, again, I pick the lightest section because this is gonna be the most economic choice. An option that you have in there. You're faster. Yes. Uh, the three quarters is that the diameter of the bolts? Yeah. This gave you the through bolt. You see this? Expected three quarter of an inch through bolt. So this gave you here three quarter of an inch diameter, right? Oh, I see it. Thank you. No problem. So now I'm going to be doing a quick spreadsheet. You're going to have two equations, and for each equation, you're going to be figuring out Vtn and then one new cell just to take the smaller of the two values. Now you put the HSS 4 by 4 by 316, and then you put the numbers there. What do you need out of it? Well, the thickness is going to be the same, just the gross section area. You look it up from the table, and then you put it there in one of the cells. And then you try the 5 by 5. Once you're able to cover the largest of the three values, will come to the tension force ultimate tension force. In this case, you say, good, this gave me the section. I'm done. Let me write down all the answers. All right, remember that this 100 kips is ultimate. It's already factored. This is not life load or dead load. And this gave me the only force. Someone's going to say, how about the weight of the truss? I'm going to say, neglected. It is not there. Don't use, don't consider anything for the weight. Just use this 100 kips to be your ultimate force. I guess I answered all the questions that you may come to your mind, I guess. Uh, are we good? Yes, yes I think so. Right. Great. All right. Here's a new slide set. It's gave about flexure design of members. Flexure design means beams, basically. And um, in flexure demand, if you guys recall, it's gonna be very similar to the tensile demand. 
to the shear demand, you're going to have load factors. And we have seen this load factors before. If you are doing an AS design, this is going to be the load factors. Almost no factors at the beginning, if you see here in the first two equations. Uh, only dead load. So this is only dead load on life load that you have in excess. This is going to be dead load or dead load plus life load. What happened here to F and H? It's going to be for the soil or when you have fluid, which means that you have hydrostatic pressure. Like if you have a tank, we don't have this case in our course. We don't cover this. I don't want to go there. So I'm just going to keep it simple for dead load on life load. So for ASD, you just add the values to each other. So the demand in ASD is going to be equal to the loads as they happen, which means going to be just the service loads. Uh, in our course here, we're going to be working only with LRFD. So I'm going to have here load factors, 1.4 dead load versus 1.2 dead plus 1.6 life load. So, okay, this is going to be the demand I'm going to be working with. Now, in our case here, when you have flexure member, it means that you're going to have a moment and shear that you need to design for. I'd like to take you here back in this example. This example says 3.1, but refers to example 1.1. What was example 1.1? I want you guys to take a minute or a second and go back to your uh, notes and see what is this example about. Example 1.1 was really about determining the load. Here's the way it was written. That's why I have it in italics, the differentiate between this slide set and the previous one. It gives you here partial floor plan with some spacing. And it give you here the dead load as 85 PSF, and also they give you the span of the beam, and then they ask for beam B1. What is the ultimate load that you need to design for? Ultimate load when we calculate that was 2.09 kipper linear foot. So you said, okay, good, we are done with this. Now we have the ultimate load. Now for this B1, we need to design it. So I said, okay, I need to find out the moment, ultimate moment, and ultimate shear. Now, the uniform load is going to be 2.09. The span, as was given to us, was equal to 33 feet. So in this case, the moment, this is going to be here simply supported beam. So we're going to have the moment, W squared divided by 8. Here is the weight, W, ultimate. So if I give you here W ultimate, you can find out M ultimate, W squared divided by 8. And here's the moment, value. Now, do I need to take this moment again multiply by load factors? I'm going to say no, because this is based on W ultimate. You don't double multiplication, you don't double it. Same thing for the shear. It's going to be WL over 2. Now, here's the shear value. So now I have my moment demand and my shear demand. And the question is, which beam section would you pick to be able to resist this moment and shear? Let's give you the question. Any questions so far? Nope, all clear. All right, very good. Now let's talk here about flexural strengths. Now, because in this example here, we are done with the demand, right? We did the design moment. We call this design moment and design shear. So if you call it design moment or design shear, you are talking here about demand. If you say here the, the term design and then moment, shear, or an axial load, or tension, like in the previous slide set, Tension force, if you say design and then you put moment shear or tension or torsion or whatever, it means that you're talking about demand. In the capacity, we don't call it design. So the word here, design, once you say design moment, means the moment demand. So you're gonna say, when it comes here to the flexure trends, you look here at the beam section, and then you say, how can I find out the flexure capacity of this beam section? Let me bring this up. I'm gonna say, in the first slide set, we discussed, if I may just bring it back. We discussed two type of beams. This is example 1.1. And then we discussed the composite versus non-composite. 
we say in the composite, we have the steel beam and then we have the concrete deck on the top and we have these connectors, the mechanical connectors between the beam and the concrete. And in this case, we're gonna be doing something very similar to what we have done in concrete design, reinforced concrete design, that we have the steel and we have also the rebar. Now in this case, we have the concrete and then we have the steel section. In concrete design, we have the concrete and then we have the rebars inside there. We put the rebars to take tension and the concrete's gonna be taking compression. The other hand, we have non-composite. Non-composite usually gonna be used when you don't have concrete deck or when there is no connection between the steel beam and the concrete deck. Now, which one do you think is gonna be stronger in terms of, let's say, flexure, like moment capacity? This is gonna be, if the beam size is gonna be the same, but one of them is gonna be composite, the other one's gonna be non-composite. So we're gonna say, composite beam is gonna be stronger. Why? Because you are using here the concrete that was already provided to you. In both of these two cases, you see here that the steel beam is connected to the concrete deck. And here also the beam is gonna be connected to the metal deck. It's gonna be welded to it. If you apply any moment in here, the top flange is giving compression. Same thing here, top flange is giving compression. In both of these two cases, the top flange is braced. So it wouldn't move laterally, right or left. Why? Because you have this to brace it. What is bracing the top flange here? The concrete deck. What is bracing the top flange here? It's gonna be the metal deck. So in our cases here, we have bracing to the top flange. All right, with that, I'm gonna stop at this point. And um, if you like, you can just sign out in the chat room and leave and you stay here if you have any questions. Professor, for the, this uh, um, chapter three lecture notes, is it possible for it to be uploaded to Canvas? It's already there. For the lecture, it is already there. Can you check it and let me know? Uh, professor, I just checked and it's not there. Okay. I'll post it. Good thing we just started with it, but I'll post okay. it in a second. Thank you. Also, Professor, it seems like the homework number two PDF file does not open up. On there? Was that? Give me a sec. Okay. Um, okay. I'll upload it in a minute from you. What else? The, the homework number two file uh, on Canvas is something's wrong with it. I'm not sure what. Yeah, it's still locked. I tried downloading it earlier. Yeah. Let me see. Um, all right. This is here, home. I'm going to be going to homework. Download it. I'm going to click on this. I download it here. It works. Uh, do you want to try it now? Yeah, let me give it a shot. I think the file is still locked. I just tried to download it. What does it say? It says, uh, it says this file is currently locked. Locked. Hmm. I don't know what this means by luck, but okay. Can I can I share my screen, Professor? It, it's when we try to download it, we get redirected to a screen that says it's locked. Okay, all right. I'm gonna redo it differently. Oh, I have two here. This is weird. It was not there a minute ago. You guys see this? Two homeworks? Uh, yes. It, it, that's the one that you changed the date of. But there was already another one that said for September 6th here, for homework two. Yeah, but when I go here under home, choose only one. Because that's the only one that's, um, I think, due. Oh. It's on the right. You can see it's, it's, you know, the coming up section. You can see two homeworks. Yeah, this is weird. But why you have here two and I have only here one? Look at this. You know what? I'm just gonna remove it from here. I'm gonna remove the entire homework too and just redo it. Okay, thank you, Professor.